if we're talking about the history of the place, probably the best place to begin is the beginning. My great-grandfather settled this place in about 1870s. And then over the course of time, he got into the lumber business and the concrete pipe business and, and the banking business down in Ogden and gave this to my grandfather. And in about 1920, somewhere between 18 and 20, the little bear river was running right through the center of our place and it was washing out the valuable topsoil. And back then we didn't have the Corps of Engineers to deal with, so he moved the little bear river over against the mountain so it would wash out the clay and leave the topsoil in the center of the place. Then in about 1922 or 23, he loved to fish. And he'd go out to the native streams and he wouldn't catch many fish, so he called a guy from the National Fish Hatchery in Springville and bought some fish and put them in a pond. And it became great fun for all the family and friends. And, and he didn't think of processing fish at that time, but as time progressed, he met a guy that had a restaurant in Logan named George Lamb. And he came out and they caught some fish and they hauled them back to the restaurant and they served them and yeah, it turned out that that was a good food fish. So my dad tells me that over the course of the years they had to go catch them all by hook before we started using drag nets and, and everything else. So originally this was a catch and take facility. Then in 1926 we made it a trout farm for processing the trout for food fish. And from 26 till about 90 we processed. Uh, the last year we processed in 90, we were doing seven and a half million pounds a year. <clears throat> but then we got contrary with the Division of Wildlife Resources and we had a, a virus in our fish and they wanted to get rid of it. So when they came and poisoned everything and told us we had to take the top six inches of topsoil out of all the raceways, spray them with chlorine, let them sun disinfect, we became a certified facility. So when you're selling live fish certified, you're working on about a 50% profit margin versus about a 22% profit margin when you're processing. So the live market was great. Then in uh, about 93 or 94, they found whirling disease in the Little Bear River. That shut us down again, and uh, I had some close friends from the U.S. Trout Farmers Association. One in Poconos in New York, one in Springfield, Missouri, one in Red Bluff, California, and one in Boulder, Colorado. They'd all been to our facility and they told me that we could actually make this a profitable fishing facility. And of course when we started I looked at them like they'd lost this, their mind completely. Well before my dad died we drove around this facility and I said tell me what it used to look like. And we drew a schematic and I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but right in the center of the place we've got a little sign that says Cub Creek. That's literally the old Little Bear River Channel. I have a fraternity brother named Mike Whitaker who owns Whitaker Construction and he'd lose a tracko here every summer for about 90 days and say, said, you're the one that can operate it, you're the only one that can operate it, so do what you need to. So we destroyed a trout farm and took it back to the way it was in the early 1900s. So right now, the water flows just like it did. We have five natural spawning beds, and our goal was to produce the greatest fishery there is in the state of Utah, or even in the western United States. On this facility, we have rainbows, cutthroats, cut bows, browns, steelhead, and splake. A good, good mixture of a sporting fish. We use the cameloop strain of rainbow. That is probably the best sporting fish as far as a rainbow is concerned. But oddly enough, it's also the best food fish. Because it has a short neck and a big thick body. Those fish you enjoy today are the Kamloops strain rainbows that we still, we still process some. You've been through our clubhouse and you see we have a full commercial restaurant. And last year we served a little over 8,500 fillets in that commercial restaurant. So we do a lot of cooking. We have our cabins. so. We've got guests that once they enter this gateway that we're looking at, it's one-stop shopping. From the time they get here to the time they leave, they stay, eat, fish, hunt, do whatever they'd like to on this facility. And that's what I think makes it so unique. The other part that makes it unique is we do sell memberships, and we've got members that have been members of this facility since the early 90s. And over the course of time, with the people coming back, you, you actually build a great bond of friendship. And you look forward to them coming back, and they look forward to coming back. 
and it makes it just one big happy club. And if you could interview some of our fishermen, I think you'd find that they would all tell you this year's been the best fishing they've ever seen. What does make it really good fishing? Well, over the course of 15 years now, we have gone through all these streams and we've tried to redo them somewhat. When I say redo, we've tried to make them look like a natural mountain stream. We've got one stretch left and when we get it finished, it'll all look like a natural mountain stream. The key to it is what produces invertebrates. And that's rocks, gravel, breakers. What makes the fishing good? Stirring up the water so it's not just flowing smooth and satiny. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to put in enough cobble and enough breaker, breaking areas so that we get good invertebrate growth. It keeps the water waving a little bit so it makes it easier to catch a fish. And talking to people, they say this is the best place I've ever fished. So that's all I care about. If they're happy, we're happy. From the time we started this fly fishing catch and release facility, probably the key interest was the movie that came out a few years ago or a number of years ago called The River Runs Through It. And to watch those guys out on the streams casting so beautifully, it was so graceful to watch them throw that line back and forth and back and forth. So it almost became something of beauty. And that's why when we developed this fishery, we decided to be, make it a fly fishing catch and release rather than a catch and take facility. When you come down and you, and you look at the facility itself, no matter whether it's spring, winter, summer, or fall, there's some type of beauty you're going to find in this facility. Even in the winter when the snow's two or three feet deep, it still has a beauty that is unbelievable. So you take that and you, hand, you put in the gracefulness of a really refined fly fisherman and there's nothing as pretty as watching somebody catch fish with a fly line. Another item of interest that has really been something that has energized myself is we have one member that's 92 years old and four years ago I looked up along this road right through the gateway and I saw him teaching a young guy how to fish. Well, be, below him there were another four guys and I walked up and started talking to him and his name was Bill Christensen, really a nice guy and really a good fly fisherman. And he said, I want you to meet my great-great-great-grandson. Then you can see my great-great-grandson, my great-grandson, my grandson, and my son. I've taught all these, he called them chaps, I've taught all these chaps how to fly fish. So fly fishing is also something that you can do as you get older. I don't think there's an age limit, it's just whenever your arms can't move. That's something that we... we that we've capitalized on is we've got a place that I think has got some true beauty, natural beauty. Then you throw the natural beauty of a really, really good fly fisherman, and it's something you can't see in a lot of places. Now we do have an area that the Division of Wildlife Resources has gained access to, so it's public fishing, and that's the little bear river that, as it runs through our place. And we have seen a lot of people up to the little bear river fly fishing, but they also catch and take. But I'll tell you, when I come down sometimes in the early afternoons and I look out and see four or five people out fishing, especially when they're young kids fishing, uh, to me, we've created something that all generations can use and utilize and enjoy. And I'll tell you, when those kids are out here fly fishing, if they really catch the bug, that's a lot better than being on the streets. So I think we've developed something that, that's, that's good for all. The question that's been posed to me is how do we manage our stream so that we don't get too many fish in the stream so that we they start to take the feet away from the other fish and so they grow and stay healthy. Well, I mentioned before that we tried to make a 100% natural facility. And I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but there are some ospreys that fly around here and when they dive they take fish. There are some great blue heron that come in here and when they die when they go down they come up with fish. We have coons that take fish, uh, otters that take fish, mink will take fish. So when it's 100% natural like that, the overpopulation is pretty slim. But then again, we do a lot of corporate entertaining and they bring in clients, a lot of whom have never fly fished before in their life. Uh, although we put guides with them and they do the best they can, we still have some mortality. 
due to the fact they may hold it out of the water too long when they want to get a pitcher. They may uh, foul hook it. Uh, they may yank it too hard. They may just stress the fish and, and it doesn't come out of it. So we do have some mortality, somewhere between 7 and 13 percent a year. Uh, and that's probably because I don't think there's a day of the week that goes on we don't have at least two to three fishermen on the place. And although we've got two and a half miles of streams and 14 acres of still water, uh, it all gets fished every week. Uh, so I, that also helps in kind of managing the number of fish in the facility. I can tell you this much though, any fish you catch that's under 20 inches now has been naturally reproduced within the facility. If you catch something in the, in the uh, 31, 35 inch range that weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 to 18 pounds, that was probably some that I stocked in the 90s, early 90s. But since 95, we don't, we don't stock fish. The only time we stock fish was I wanted to introduce steelhead, so we brought steelhead in and raised them in our facility that's adjacent to our fly fishing facility and raised them to 12 to 13 inches so we could release them. The re reason we raised them to be that size is so they can get away from some of the bigger fish. The splake trout, the Division Wildlife Resources gave us, it's, uh, it's a sterile fish, so there won't be any reproduction with that particular variety. But all the rest of our strains of trout all will reproduce. Uh, the browns, we have one brown that we've nicknamed uh, Godzilla. When he swims up to the spawning beds, he swims with the wake. We've tried to catch him. We've had really good fishermen try to catch him. I've tried to dip him. We've never, no one has ever succeeded in catching him. We have had a lot of fishermen that have hooked a fish that took their line right through the backing. That tells me it might have been Godzilla or something similar to that size. But we did catch a, a brown last May that was seven, 17 and a half pounds, 31 and a half inches. It was a female moving up to the spawning beds and Godzilla came, I'm sure, to fertilize the eggs. And when he swam, there was no question he was a good third bigger. So we have some monsters. We have a lot of a lot of 18 to 24 inch fish. We have a considerable amount of 8 to 18 inch. And we've developed some of our still waters and around the spawning beds so that the fry can swim freely along the edges without the big fish being able to take them all. So our natural reproduction is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 22%. It's not huge, but it is working.